Hello everyone. Today we're going to explore an essential concept of programming, decision structures. Decision structures allow programmers to make choices and execute different code paths based on conditions. This makes our programs dynamic, responsive to uh, different inputs and situations. So what are decision structures? Well, decision structures, also known as control structures, Enable a program to make decisions or execute specific code blocks based on certain conditions. The primary decision structures in Java are if statements, if else statements, if else if statements, and switch statements. The purpose of decision structures uh, is to control that flow of a program by evaluating set conditions and branching the execution paths. The decision structure allows programs to uh, react to user input, validate data, um, perform different actions based off different conditions, and implement complex logic that requires conditional execution. Well, the basic decision structures in Java, let's, let's just take a closer look at each type of decision structure um, and see how they work with some examples. So the first one will be the if statement. The if statement evaluates the condition. If the condition is true, then that code block inside the if statement is executed. So here, take a look at the syntax we have here. If, you know, whatever the condition is, um, and if the condition is true, whatever is within these curly brackets will be executed. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we had uh, an int. Age. Uh, or let's say that equal to 20. And if, let's say the age is 18. So if age is greater than or equal to 18. Um, then we'll you know, in the United States, that person is now considered an adult. So we'll put something out here. System else plus line. So if the age is well, so the age is twenty. If the age is greater than 18, then you're an adult. So in this case, we should see that this person is an adult.
Okay, so that's good. Now you see that you are an adult. The if else statement, the if else statement provides an alternate path of execution if the condition is false. So do something similar to this. Stick with that condition of age again. So if age is greater than or equal to 15, Else, this is This and let me see, you are an adult. Uh, let's change the age from 20 instead of person 16. So 16 is not greater than a good age, 18, so this will as be false. Therefore, we'll go down here, else, and this is your catch off for the way to get us. So, what about if there's another condition when you do that? So, there's the, e, the if. Else if statement. So the if else if statement allows multiple conditions to be evaluated sequentially. Um, the first true conditions, the first true conditions code block is executed. Okay. So that will be similar to the layout in this way. So, we have if, we have our first condition, else if, our second condition, and else, our, everything else, any, anything else that the first conditions, first two conditions are not met. This is what happens, okay? So, sticking with our example here, this time, let's talk about grades. Okay. So, let's say, Grade of five and F grade is greater than equal to ninety. We will say that person has an A, right? So this is not out that point one. Grade A. Else if B. B of the grade is greater than equal to 80. I don't think that was 70. I said if the grade was greater than 70, you said the grade was a C. All right. And then else if the grade was. 60 or above, because we've already taken care of those conditions. D. Else, to send that out by point one. Maybe F. Okay. So we got an 85, so we just put the D. B. 
ਕੀਤੀ The fourth option, the switch statement. The switch statement allows a variable to be tested against a list of values. Each value is called a case, um, and the variable being switched on is checked for each case. So, I'll give you a general book of the syntax. So, you have the variables you're going to switch on, and then you're going to each case is the value that you're going to check for. So does the variable equal that value? Uh, does the second, and if it does, execute this code, and then there's this keyword break. Oh, my, that doesn't hit it. Uh, case two, uh, if, it's, if the variable equals value two, then we do this instead, and then we break. And then we can list all the cases we want. And we always have a default in case none of the cases above match. Okay. So. Let's do, uh, let's do days of the week. So, the day of example. So, let's say it's the third day of the week. Um, and the variable we're going to switch on is day. So, we're going to switch on different days. So, case, uh, if case is one, then we want to say that today is Monday. Cases two. Okay, so we're going to say it's Tuesday. Yeah. Case four, case five, case six, case seven, seven days a week. The default, none of those cases, we don't have a right day, right? A like an invalid day. Instead, the day is. Third day, so we just have one day come out there. So let's take a look and see what happens. Times that nine. Why don't we have like this break right here? In conclusion, there, there you have it. <laughs> Decision structures are fundamental to making our programs responsive and dynamic. Um, they allow us to control the flow of execution based off conditions and make our code more versatile. Um, so practice using these structures in your code. 
uh, in your programs to get comfortable with making decisions in code. So time for some decisions. Do you want to hot or bull Java or bull? Oh, oh. Bon appetit. <laughs>